Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Channel's television celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. This is the News at 10, a reminder of our major stories. Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka calls for swift action by President Muhammad Buhari in resolving the militancy in the Niger Delta. For the second time this week, parents of missing Chibok girls and other groups march to the presidential villa, demand swap of the Boko Haram prisoners for abducted students. Internally displaced persons take to the streets of Medjugorje in protest over diversion of supplies meant for them. State government orders direct supplies to the IDPs. And search for survivors in the Italy earthquake continues as death toll rises above 240. Do remember that all our top stories can be found on our website, it's channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. Do visit m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. Besides the news and updates, the Channels TV app has an eyewitness feature. We encourage you to use it to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. And now to some of the pictures you sent into our eyewitness portal. First is this one from Gembu Road in Taraba State showing an erosion. Our eyewitness reporter wants the government to look into this urgently. And that is followed by this one from Kano State University of Science and Technology, Woodill in Kano State showing a collapsed building. Our eyewitness reporter is asking the authorities to take action and prevent a future recurrence. And from GRA in Ole, Isoko, south of Delta State, comes this one, showing a bad road. Our eyewitness reporter is asking the government to fix it. And we got this picture from Raji Rasaki Road in Yanoipaja, area of Lagos State. Our eyewitness reporter wants the government to repair the bad road. And finally, is this one from Mile 12 area in Lagos State as well, showing a lavatory constructed with roofing sheets under the flyover. Our eyewitness reporter is warning residents of this area against such dirty acts. We want to thank you so much indeed for sending in those pictures as we ask that you keep them coming. And now for a better understanding of what the IDPs are complaining about, we're now being joined on the News at 10 by Mr. Mohamed Kana, the Northeast Coordinator of NEMA on the News. We want to thank you so much indeed for coming at this time. There are indeed uh, grave accusations coming in from the IDPs. You just heard that report before we went on that short recess. Complaining, first of all, of not being fed frequently. And even when the food gets to them, they claim that the quantity is bad. What do you make of this accusation? Well, um, actually... Uh uh, I want you to know that uh, uh, IATC camp is not the only camp that we are having in my degree. Uh, state government, uh, Borno State Government and the National Emergency Management Agency has been looking after 32 different IDP camps within my degree and also at the satellite camp outside my degree. And uh, we are being on this for almost two years now. Uh, in two years, it's just about two or three months that uh, we are together with uh, uh, these people and that we have been working hand in hand. And uh, you should also understand that the main fundamental uh, uh, issues that, are, that concern distribution of food, uh, channeling it down to the IDPs, does not involve the activity of the National Emergency Management Agency. It has procedures. It has channels that uh, it follows before a food will reach the IDPs. The food will start from the National Emergency Management Agency. Then in order to have proper collaboration and, and to make sure that uh, each and every uh, humanitarian partner is involved in the activities of uh, camp management, we make sure that uh, we involve everybody uh, in distribution and also uh, maintenance, camp, um, camp management activities. 
So we give this food directly to the uh, uh, state emergency management. Then the state emergency management will make is have the have the responsibility of distributing this food to uh, IDPs in all these camps. And then there is what is called a dry ratio distribution, which is a, a a new format that we have just introduced because of the complaint uh, when the food is cooked and uh, the distribution takes uh, time longer than necessary before IDG, IDP will get his plate of food. So the the world standard system of dry ratio distribution is being adopted. And no, then no, we'll uh, try uh, permit me to just come in there. Various camp and uh, uh, ATC. Permit me to just uh, interject there. My apologies. Uh, the IDPs specifically oh. said that uh, those in charge of the camps are diverting the food stuff and selling them for their personal gains. Is this true? Well, actually, uh, you know, we cannot uh, take any statement that came from hearsay story. Uh, definitely, uh, sometimes, from time to time, you may find some challenges in the distribution of food uh, before uh, the IDF will get it. But we did not get this complaint directly. And uh, right now, the state government and then the national emergency are in the process of uh, arranging this uh, direct distribution of food to, uh, to the IDPs. That is through dry ratio distribution system. And uh, ATC has been uh, arranged to be distributed either yesterday or today. And uh, they were at Bakasi when they were doing the distribution when uh, some people uh, go and uh, uh, went to the camp and then uh, maybe uh, 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 maybe uh, uh, circulate certain rumors that uh, probably they are not even going to get the food and uh, the, uh, the state government and the NEMA they are now organizing to evacuate them to another camp so today they may not get even food so that was uh, the beginning of the story when they started uh, when they had that news then they just came out to the street and started uh, doing writing. Mr. Mohammed uh, Kana, can the North, us, uh, they know that. Uh, my apologies, sir. I, I do apologize that we're going to have to stop it at this point. Uh, Mr. Mohammed Kana, the Northeast Coordinator of NEMA, I want to thank you so much indeed for talking to us on the news at 10. Though constructive work has commenced on Benish Agamu Federal Highway, which extends from Edo State in the South South to Ogun State, in the southwest, cases of motor accidents are still being recorded. Motorists and petty traders along the highway are asking the government to attend urgently to areas that are bad. In 2012, the federal government approved over 65 billion naira for the rehabilitation of the Bini Shagamu Expressway. The project was to be completed in 36 months. But before the completion date, a further sum of about 71 billion naira was again approved in 2014 for reconstruction and asphalt overlay of the road. Yet, at the Ondo State end of the Bini Ore Expressway, potholes can be seen marring the surface of the road. Movement slows down to a crawl such that street hawkers can comfortably peddle their wares. Things begin to look up as one approaches Onipetesi and 49, as well as other settlements where road and bridge reconstruction is taking place. But motorists say it's not enough. What they are doing here is nothing, nothing done. They are not doing anything. They are not helping us. Some street vendors say they would have preferred not to do business here, but they see no way out. Others are happy for anything they can get. It's the right thing to do by this time of the year, so that by the time, during the Yulitai period, that people will be traveling on this road, that they are used to have a lot of traffic on this road. 
It will not be that bad. The controller for the Federal Ministry of Works in the state is not available for comment. The outlook is so much better at the Edo end of the highway. Where the Benin Ekadolo and Ekadolo Fosu stretches of the highway, rehabilitated recently, are in moderable condition. The grounds of motorists here is the uncovered drain that they suddenly come up against in the center of the expressway, as well as isolated incidents such as this tanker, which they say combined to cut and suspecting drivers unawares, especially at night. Coming straight from that road, you find that the roads are very smooth, forgetting that there's a gutter apart from weed that's reciting in Benin here that know that that place is a very bad spot even some good Samaritans see came, they came to that place and put one red sandbox showing danger if somebody that fell inside and pushed everything that is the end of the thing every now and then you see vehicle falling into this pool the only solution is to put slab on the gutter to cover it up you know, you know this one? The center commander for the Federal Road Safety Corps in Edo State, Samuel Odukoya, thinks differently. He feels that motorists tend to lose concentration because the road is smooth. Some of them don't know what they, what, what, what they are thinking. They are not, they, their mind is not on, uh, on the wheel. The FRSE chief also attributes accidents to overspeeding. Back from Okada to Okada, Ovia. In a way, my relation are pushing that they what to call a women they are far. That place is a flat land, and then you see they increase their speed and uh, they increase. And they mean they're they approaching, and they cannot control themselves. At times, it's just called a, a lone accident. You just see that there may be tire bust, over speeding, loss of control. Those who know are sure road travelers that the Shagamo interchange is also being taken care of. They are also mobilizing fully on, on site around Shagamu area. RUCC has commenced full execution of the works. Authorities say in spite of the errors drivers commit, the accident rates have dropped because of road repairs which have been effected. Perhaps the narrative will improve at the Ondo and Shagamo ends when repair work is complete. Still ahead on the news at 10, federal government sets to inaugurate multi-million dollar agri produce city in Edo State. That's on Business News. Join us again.